put our hands together this morning. We want to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this place, King Jesus. Us, oh God, save us, oh God. Lord, we enter to you this morning and we want to come with our hearts of thanksgiving. 
with our hearts of adoration, O oh God. To you, Jesus. For you are indeed Hosanna, Hosanna. You came, Lord, and you saved us. From everything that we are not, Lord, you came and you saved us. To become everything that we are to be, Lord, in you, in Christ, Lord. We just want to take this time, Lord, to just lift up our adoration and our praise to you, our worship, Lord. Just like Mary, Lord, seated at your feet, Lord Jesus, pouring the most expensive oil unto you. May our worship, Lord, be like Mary giving you all our best we worship you we worship you Exactly how I feel, I can't begin to tell you what your love has meant. I'm lost for words. Is there a way to show the passion in my heart? Can I? Truly great, I think you are my dearest friend. Lord, this is my desire to pour my love on.
Won't you continue to give your praise and your adoration to the Lord Jesus? Lift up your thanksgiving to Him. For He delights in our praise. Thank you. 
Lord, we come to you, Lord. Holy surrendered to you, Lord. Lord, if there are any struggles that we are having right now, this morning, Lord, you help us, Lord. Anything that is coming in the way from getting to know you more, Lord Jesus, we ask this morning, Lord, that you will just make a way. Help us, Lord, to come to you wholly surrendered. Pour your love unto us this morning, Lord. Sing all to Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him His presence daily I surrender. I surrender all, Lord.
Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We surrender all, Lord. Lord, this is our prayer, Lord. As we enter into the Holy Week, Father, Lord, we surrender all. Even as you are our all in all, Lord, we also surrender our all in all before you, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to minister to your beloved, Lord. And we stand in your presence. Thank you, God, for the ministering power of yours, Lord, Father, that have touched hearts, Lord. Lord, I thank you for you are here in our midst, Lord. And today, Father, we say we are blessed because one day in your house is better than a thousand days elsewhere. God, I thank you for the gathering of my brothers and sisters here, that we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, really, we will not allow anything to come between our sweet communion with you, Lord. God, I pray, do a deeper and greater work, Lord that your name be lifted up and glorified, mm. not only through the praise and worship, but Lord, throughout the whole service. Mm. May you continue to speak to us mm. in your still small voice, that beyond any shadow of a doubt, mm. we know your ears are never too dull, and your hands are never too short to save and deliver us, Lord. Lord, I commit today the whole service before you, as we declare, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. You alone deserve all glory, honour and praises forever and ever. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, be to us and pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God a big hand. Thank you, the worship team. Really appreciate for leading us into worshipping the Lord. Okay. Blessed morning. To all of you, those who are present here on site and also those who are watching us online. Okay, I noticed a few new faces. Sorry, I didn't get your name. If you are first time here in our midst, I welcome you to stand. Okay, let's uh, welcome our new visitors, okay? And we will get to know you better after the service. Thank you. Okay, today marks the 15th day, okay? Corporately, this season, we pray, left how many more days? Six more days. Let's press on, continue to pray. So, see you tonight. What time? 8.30 via Zoom. That's right. So, let us press on as we finish the race of prayer, okay? Season of prayer this coming Saturday. Today, as I mentioned, it is also Palm Sunday as we enter into the Holy Passion Week. Okay, Matthew 21 verse 9. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This week, I pray that all of us, our focus will be nothing else and no one else, but only the Lord Jesus. He is worthy of it all. Without Him, Without Him, there will be no cross. So, if there's no cross, imagine what would we be, the condition that we are in, okay? So, in line with Holy Week, this coming Friday, we will have Good Friday service physically online, okay? Online. Time, 8 p.m., okay? Oh, yeah. You see, I say on, I meant on site physically, but my mind, okay, sorry, my, my mistake. On site, not online. Just now I mentioned physically, right? Okay, my. Uh, Friday, we will meet physically here, but Saturday, Saturday is a holy Saturday. So Saturday, we will meet online. Okay, we repeat back. Uh, every day online except Friday on site. And Saturday, the last one we will do online. Okay, Resurrection Sunday service, next Sunday. 
Do you have someone in mind to uh, invite? Oh, no, we are very comfortable. We come and go by ourselves. Let's make it an evangelistic event because people's heart actually very tender, open during this holy week. Let us pray, ask God, God, is there someone that you want me to invite? Whether they come or not is their choice, uh -huh. but whether we want to invite or not, that's our decision. Understand? So let us pray. He or she may be no longer in church, but they profess they are believers. Let us pray that God's love will draw them back to His house. Okay? So I pray, uh, next week we'll see the multiplication double this size. Okay? Amen. Okay? By faith. Now, for FPBC members, registered members, please take note. AGM 2024 via online Zoom meeting is this Saturday, 30th of March. Time, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. The Zoom link will be sent to you. Okay, now, here they already uh, stated. Please take a photo. If not, you will also receive an email and also... WhatsApp through CG leaders. Now, before I continue on with the announcement, let us take a break. I invite Elder Raymond to make announcement regarding worship and audiovisual open day. Let's welcome him. Ta da! -dang. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, it, as you can see here, um, the worship team ministry and the audio-visual ministry, which is the media ministry, will be having a, an open day um, next Sunday, uh, right after service, okay? So, um, the details are there. So, what is this open day? Yeah. So, um, the church has planned um, a couple of uh, programs for the rest of the year. Um, one, of, one of them would be like intergenerational services, okay? Whereby you will see um, the entire demographics of the church, all right? Um, serving the Lord in a particular service, okay? So that will be one of the things that we will be having in the near future. Now, the other one is a big, big highlight for our church, okay? So Christmas this year, uh, we're going to hold a very huge um, concert, okay? Uh, so what, what do we have, okay? Um, planning process, yeah? So uh, pray that it will jadi, all right? Pray that it will come to fruition, all right? So we will have, um, how many of you know Juvita Suvito? Okay, Juvita, Juvita is a Malaysian idol judge, former, and uh, she is coming to uh, be with us, okay, during the program, okay? We also have another opera singer, uh, Chang Yiling, uh, my, my friend, okay? Uh, she will also be coming to uh, bless us, okay, with uh, her operatic skills, yeah? And we also have Musica Sinfonietta, okay? We have an orchestra coming right here into our building, okay? So this is going to be a huge, huge event, yeah? So please keep your dates free on those days, 15th, 16th of December, if I'm not wrong. Pastor, am I right? Yeah, 15th, 16th, yeah? So it's, um, it's going to be a huge affair and... Um, you see, the thing is this, uh, a lot of these that you, will, that you have just heard, they are, they are from outside, right? So what about from inside our church? Huh. How can? we well, got meaning, right? Fatty Spark holding a Christmas concert and then we only invite outsiders to come and perform. Doesn't make quite much sense, right? So we want to have our own people to also put up presentations, all right? So in view of that, open day. Okay, so we are looking for talents, okay? So we, we will be combing through uh, the church, yeah, people, and see if you are musically gifted or, or if you have uh, uh, skills in audiovisual, all right? So we want your help. We need your help, okay? But this round, we will only open it up for youths uh, from age 10 above, 
Okay, seniors, hang on. <laughs> okay, coming to you. All right, coming to you. All right, but just this Sunday, this next Sunday, we are only um, having um, this age group. Yeah. So if you are a youth, ten years and above, and if you are a young adult, okay, we would like you to join us next Sunday after service. And please sign up for lunch with uh, Sherry after service. There's a list at the back of the auditorium, or you could also WhatsApp her um, with this number, all right? Um, before, by the 30th of March, Saturday noon. Is that good? Yeah. Uh, okay, wait, 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 I haven't finished. <laughs> so, for, so that's for the, um, because of time constraint, yeah? We cannot do the whole church, yeah? We're only doing this age group, yeah? So, uh, please sign up. Now, for youths 100 years old and below. Okay, did you hear what I'm saying? For youths 100 years and below. All right, come on. Okay, we, we, we are surely looking out for you, but the next round. Is that okay? Okay or not? Okay, yeah? Okay, now, I want to just inspire you with a, a little... Um, a little info, yeah, that, that is really very encouraging to me. All right, if you are a classical pianist, okay, uh, or a classical music teacher, okay, like I am, um, you would know of this particular musical composer by the name of Domenico Scarlatti. Okay, how many of you have heard of this name before? No? He's an Italian, okay, um, Italian composer, but he, um, he eventually left his... Uh, uh, he eventually left it at Italy and went to Spain, yeah? So um, what, what happened was that he, he is a great composer and very well-known today, um, not so much because of the works that he composed when he was young. He became famous because of the oeuvre of his works that were composed after he was 70 years and above. I'm serious. This is hope for me as well. Huh? 70 years and above, he became famous because of those works that he composed. You know, the exercises, okay? Per gravi cembalo, means uh, the exercises for the, the etudes for the keyboard, yeah? So, I want to encourage the, the older senior members for our church. You never know what's in you. All right? So, um, I leave this with you. Ponder over it. Maybe the Lord is saying something to some of you. There are books that are yet to be written, songs that are yet to be written, yeah? tasks that seem impossible at your age, that, seem, that needs your work. Yeah? So, no retirement. All the seniors say, no retirement. Are you like that only? One more time. Is that all we have? No. No retirement. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we will be looking for you. Okay. Now, listen to me. Uh, we're looking for, of course, musical talent in this case. Lah. Okay, but, um, but, but if you're not gifted there, then there are also other ministries that we would like you to put your hands on. Yeah, to serve the Lord and to serve the, gener the, gen the generation. Amen? Amen. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, praise the Lord. Next one. Senior Branch Fellowship, since we are gearing towards intergenerational connection and gathering, we will change this name. We are open to all and extend the invitation to all. All, everyone, okay? Everyone, you are invited. On the Saturday, 6th of April, 10 a.m., the special speaker is none other than Dr. Thomas Chin. So, for those of you interested, please register with Brother Joel. Next one. Today, full of excitement. Ah. Okay, for those who really, really, youth one, ah, really one, Young people also. 
fires camp. How come no, no assignment one? <laughs> How many of you, you have been to fires camp? Oh, one, Pastor Alvin. <laughs> Very young, okay? Very young. Fires camp is back and the team is trailblazing the future. Fires camp usually will be held during Raya break, organized by City Light Church, okay? So here, it is from Wednesday, 10th of April to Friday, 12th of April. Venue is MGS, Methodist Girls' School. You see, uh, normal registration is RM120. But if you use a code, I'm going to give you the code. Got the discount one, okay? The code is big letter or MGS FIRES. Then the discounted price is only 100 Okay, but let's say you team up with a group of young people. Here, a lot of young people. Huh? So you team up a group of five. Further discount, 450. Divide five means you save another $10. Okay, so 90 lah. Huh? This will include three days and two nights accommodation, the food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and the fire scam t shirt. Volunteers needed, really. Uh, someone told me that there's no age limit to the volunteers. I said, wow, okay, very good. I think FPBC will make up most of the volunteers, right? We are very helpful, right or not? Helpful group of people, amen, really one. Really, I'm not trying to pull your leg. So I hope that you are senang lenang during Raya break, right? Please sign up. The link is, you know, you can... If you are interested, please, uh, you can register uh, for those youth, uh, young people, can register with Teacher Y King. Or you want the link or everything, you can see me. I have the, the link to sign up also. Okay? Understand? Yes. Uh. Ah, yeah. One more thing. The speaker. First of all, number one, of course, none other than the senior pastor of City Light Church. Uh. Pastor Daniel Lau. He has been here before. He preached also, and he is really very, you can sense his passion for young people, okay, Pastor Daniela. And the second one, you must hear her. I heard her during the Miri Tribal Gathering. Pastor Sabrina Lo. The church she pastored together with Pastor Rachel Bulan is called Cornerstone Community Church Bonio. They have two branches, one in Kuching, one in Miri. So they are very powerful dynamite. Believe me when I say they are really very good. But only one will come, huh? Pastor Sabrina Lo. So please uh, mark your calendar. I think here, hopefully majority will sign up. Huh? Okay. The third one, I do not know him, but I just mentioned. Pastor Garrick Lee is City Harvest Church from Taiwan. Okay. Three, three special speakers. So hope you all will encourage. If you know of someone, okay, that really need a revival. So Fires Camp is a three-day adventure where young people gather to have fun, of course, play games, a lot of games, and learn important life skills. The camp aims to help them grow together, build confidence, and create a positive culture of passion and friendship. You know, I've read through some of the testimonies. Some people, after the first time, they continue to participate, you know, until, you know what? They reach young adult. Then they become what? Volunteer. Until no age limit. Okay? So really, this is the revival for the here and now generation. That's why I really hope that you will sign up for someone or you yourself, please sign up as a volunteer. I believe this will be a new awakening as we gear towards intergenerational community. Okay? There's no gap in reaching out. Okay? Yes. That's all for today. Let's honour the Lord with tithes and offering.
Okay, let's pray. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Truly, Lord, we recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We recognize, Lord, we can give because you first gave us, Lord. We can love because you first love us. Therefore, today, as we gave our all in all, as we commit our tithes and offering, Lord, may you continue to bless all this seed faith for the extension of a kingdom and the glory of your name. And I pray in the name of Jesus, this will be also, Lord Father, Lord, for the harvest to come, Lord, because we know you are doing something in the spiritual realm. Let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I thank you. I also commit, Lord, but Elder Jeremy before you, May you continue to anoint him to be your mouthpiece, Lord. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Bless every ear, bless every heart, bless every life, Lord, that are presented here, that we will continue to be changed and transformed, no longer the same. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we do ask and pray. Amen. Let's welcome Elder Jeremy. Thank you, Pastor Winnie. Shalom and a blessed morning. Just feel I want to read for all of us uh, Psalm 19, especially as we come before the Lord and His Word. Uh, we recognize that um, we are people of God's Word, and God's Word is central to our faith life-giving and nurturing our spirits and our hearts. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them, your servant is warned, and in keeping them, there is great reward. Father, I just commit myself to you now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This morning, I would like to bring you all a Palm Sunday message. And the text is from the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 11, verse 8 to verse 21. Okay. Is it working? All right, okay. So Malaysia has a new king, eh? right? Malaysia has a new king. Uh, anybody can tell me uh, uh, what? He's the, maybe first Agong. Can you tell me the name of the first Agong? Nobody can tell, eh? all right, yeah. So, Sultan Ibrahim of Johor uh, has taken the oath of office on the, as the 17th Yang Di Pertuan Agong uh, in January this year, 31st January. And when uh, Sultan Ibrahim arrived in Kuala Lumpur uh, to be Malaysia's new king, he came in a private jet. Okay. Uh, he, holds, he holds a pilot's license. I'm not sure if he actually flew to KL. But uh, he arrived in a private plane, and when he arrived, he was welcomed by the Raja Muda of Selangor and other members of the Selangor royalty. 
He was also welcomed by the Comptroller of the Royal Household of Istana Negara, the Chief Protocol Officer of the Malaysian Government, the RMAF Subang Abbey's Commander, as well as other dignitaries. He then inspected a static honor guard mounted by two officers and 26 men from the 1st Battalion of Royal Rangers Regiment, who performed the Royal Salute before Sultan Ibrahim proceeded to Istana Negara for the oath-taking ceremony. Such pomp, such splendor for the Malaysian king. But when the king of Israel came, there were no private jets then, okay? But I'm sure if there had been private jets, he wouldn't have come on a private jet. He came on a donkey, not even a horse, you know. Talk about making a grand entry, right? And you come riding on a donkey. But Jesus had a purpose in doing so because he was fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. He was making a public declaration. Okay, before that, he was silent about it. But now, he was making a public declaration that he was the Messiah, the King of Israel. And he fulfilled this Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter, of, uh, daughter Jerusalem, see. Your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Do you see the conflict? Righteous and victorious but lowly. Righteous and victorious, but lowly, riding on a donkey. And of course, when he came, when he made his entry, the crowds, they went wild, right? They were jubilant. His entry was hailed by the people as the Messiah. They knew it. They recognize Jesus as the one who, who has come in the name of the Lord, the one who brings salvation, and the one who ushers in the kingdom of their father, David. And so in Mark 11, verse 8 and following, we read of what the people did. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Which means the Lord saves. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. There was jubilation. There was great expectation. In fact, it was sky high. Great hopes. They were waiting for this Messiah who would come and sack the Roman oppressors, deliver them so that they would be a free people. But notice this, while the crowds were there, the common people were there, the high priest was missing. The other priests were missing. Herod was not there. There was no welcoming party made up of the who and who of Jerusalem then. Jesus was snubbed by the authorities and religious leader because they declined to honor him. He came to his own, John said, and his own received him not. Let me say that again. He came to his own, and his own received him not. 
Does this still happen today? Is it possible that Jesus finds that when he comes to his own today, he will find his own receiving him not? But what what I want us to do is to notice the first thing Jesus did after entering Jerusalem. He did not go to the palace. He did not go to claim his throne. But he went into the temple courts. Mark 11, 11, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts, he looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. I would like us to notice this. Uh, out of the four Gospels, uh, the Gospel of, the, of Mark is the shortest. The shortest Gospel. But ironically, in spite of its uh, shortness, okay, it was the most detailed Gospel. It provided details about people, about places, about time and numbers. Mark is a fast-moving gospel, all action. And Mark writes succinctly, very short but concise. And so, whatever Mark has written, he has written for a purpose. And so we must pay careful attention to his words. All right? Because many of the things he has written are not recorded by the other gospel writers. So I want you to notice this phrase he looked around at everything. Why did Jesus go to the temple courts? Pastor Ray C. Statman made this uh, comment. Going to the temple courts does not sound very significant. Yet, it tells us what Jesus came to do. This was an official visit of the King of Israel. This was an official visit of the King of Israel, an inspection tour of the heart of the nation. The heart of the nation is not in the palace. The heart of the nation of Israel is in the temple. And so Jesus went into the, into the temple where the very heartbeat of the nation was throbbing, represented in the worship that was lifted up to God. Temple and worship. Jesus was doing a thorough inspection. He looked around at everything. So I want you to imagine Jesus coming into our midst this morning, looking around at everything. Do you think he'll pay attention to the lights? To the color of the carpet? To whether we have a big enough screen? He was looking at the happenings in the temple court. And because he looked at everything, nothing, not even the the minutest detail escaped his attention. And then he left without saying a single word. He came in, he looked at everything, And then he left without a word. And he went back to Bethany with the twelve.
What did he see? Mark tells us. The very next day, Read from verse 12. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a thick tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. So from Bethany, Jesus and the twelve, they were heading back to the temple. And on the way, they saw this fig tree. And how many of you find this incident a little disturbing? Why did Jesus curse the fig tree for not having fruits when it was not yet the season for figs? Don't you think that it was unreasonable for Jesus? How could he be justified for saying, may no one ever eat fruit from you again? Was Jesus hangry? Hangry, you know that word, right? Hungry and angry, hangry. There seemed to be an unreasonableness to Jesus' action. It seems so out of character of him, the patient, the gentle Jesus. It would seem like he was behaving like a child, throwing a tantrum because he didn't get his way. Disturbing? Not really if we understand what Jesus was doing. Again, pay attention. And the disciples heard him say it. Mark included that for us to pay attention to. So what Jesus did was symbolic. Jesus wanted his disciples, to hear the words of judgment. He wanted them to hear these words. And he intended it to be so because he wanted to tell his disciples something. He wanted to make it a teaching situation. You know, as a parent, uh, I always try to teach my children using actual life circumstances. Because in life, life's, life, life presents us with many, many circumstances that can be turned around to be a teaching moment for our children. How many of you have grown figs? Huh? Oh, you have? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Mrs. Liu, you also have grown figs. Huh? How come I've never tasted any of your figs? Huh? <laughs> what do you know about growing figs? Don't know, huh? Okay. This British Bible scholar by the name of F.F. F. Bruce. Uh, we, we, we get some insights about uh, growing figs, okay? So according to F.F. F. Bruce uh, in his commentary on this passage, the time of the fig is not yet, says Mark, for it was just before Passover, about six weeks before fully formed fig appears. Jesus was six weeks too early. Six weeks too early, yeah? 
The fact that Mark adds these words shows that he knew what he was talking about. When the fig leaves appear before the end of March, they are accompanied by a crop of small knobs called taksh, prefigs. Okay, another word, another term is breba, prefix. A sort of forerunner of the real fix. These taksh are eaten by peasants and others when hungry. Not nice tasting, but can still provide some nourishment. And these taksh drop off before the real fig is formed. But, this is the important thing, if the leaves appear unaccompanied by touch, there will be no fix that year. No prefix, no fix. And so it was evident to our Lord when he turned aside to see if there were any of this touch on a fig tree to assuage his hunger for the time being that the absence of the touch meant that there would be no fix when the time of fix come. No touch, no fix. For all its fair foliage, it was a fruitless and hopeless tree. Jesus was actually teaching his disciples a real-life parable. The fig tree symbolized the nation of Israel. And the hunger of Jesus was not physical. He was not hungry. He didn't want to eat figs. His hunger was spiritual in nature. And his hunger was to see spiritual fruit in the nation of Israel. And so when he went into the temple yesterday, the day before, he was looking for spiritual fruit. He was looking for that. You know, my brothers and sisters, if Jesus were to be in our midst, you know, he would be looking into our hearts. And throughout the Old Testament, Israel is described as God's vineyard. God's vineyard. Or God's planting. God's special planting. And as God's special planting, Israel must produce, Israel must yield spiritual fruit as God's covenant people. And the prophets, the OT prophets, describe God as inspecting Israel for early fix as a sign of spiritual fruitfulness. The prophet Micah, Micah 7, one. What misery is mine? I am like one who gathers summer fruit at the gleaning of the vineyard, Israel. There is no cluster of grapes to eat, none of the early figs that I crave. And the prophet Jeremiah, uh, you can only find this uh, rendition of, of this verse in the N NRSV. Jeremiah 8 verse 13, When I wanted to gather them, says the Lord, there are no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, even the leaves are withered, and what I gave them has passed away from them. Notice huh? the prophet Jeremiah talking about God wanting to gather fruit. Let me ask you, is God still wanting to gather fruit today? 
Yes. He is. And so what spiritual fruit did Jesus expect to see when he went to the temple? Let me read this uh, commentary by Reverend C. Bauman. Jesus ought to expect a lot of piety in the temple. There should be people thankful for God's blessings and so bringing thank offerings to the temple. He should be seeing that. There should be people broken on account of their sins and so bringing their sin offerings to the temple. There should be thankful people. There should be, uh, you know, penitent people. People with hearts that are broken and contrite. There should be priests officiating at the sacrifices and explaining to the people each step of the ritual that God's justice demanded that the sinner dies on account of his sin. But God in his mercy allows the sin to be transferred to the animal with the animal being killed instead. The priest should be telling the people and teaching people that there is a necessity for blood sacrifice. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Paul says, the priest should be explaining to the forgiven Israelite that he has every reason to be thankful for God's gracious grace and mercy and that he is to show his thankfulness by living a life of obedience to God. Fruitlessness leads to judgment. And so when Jesus went to the temple, he did something unthinkable. So what did Jesus see in the temple courts the day before? He saw a place bustling with activities, religious activities. He saw sacrifices being made. He saw burnt offerings presented by the people. He heard singing and praying crowds. He could smell the fragrance of incense. Lots of action. Lots of bustle. Lots of noise. But no righteousness. Leaves, but no fruit. It was all a show. It was all a show. What did Jesus see? He saw commercialism. He saw money changes. He saw exploitation. He saw corruption and injustice. He saw that religious ceremonies were being carried out without meaning whatsoever. And I want to read to you from Isaiah 1. You know what God said to the Israelites through his prophet? Isaiah 1 verse 12, When you come to appear before me, who requires of you this trampling of my courts? Bring your worthless offerings no more. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure in iniquity and the solemn assembly. I hate your new moon festival, festivals and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. That's a frightening thing to hear. Oops. 
Israel has not borne fruit. And so the judge, Jesus, has arrived to pass sentence. So Mark eleven fifteen, we read, On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. He did that. Jesus enacted another parable after cursing the fig tree. He acted out a parable of destruction. You know, Jesus said in John 4 that the Father is looking for worshippers. Not worship, you know. The Father is looking for worshippers. There was a lot of worship. But Jesus saw very few worshippers. And so when Jesus overturned the benches, you know, when he uh, drove out the buyers and sellers, he overturned tables, he stopped those who were carrying merchandise, you know, everybody was shocked. And there were a lot of people, why? It was before the Passover. Many, many people. So this is like prime time television. Prime time for Jesus. And what Jesus did was firstly this. He cleansed the temple from commercialism. Now note this is the second cleansing. The first is recorded for us in John chapter 2 after Jesus turned water into wine. This is the second cleansing. Why were there traders in the temple in the first place? Traders were there because they were doing a service to the worshippers. They were selling animals as a service. The money changers were there because they were helping the people to exchange normal currency into temple currency. You cannot buy anything using normal currency. You must have temple currency. And they were making excessive profits from commercializing sacrificial offerings. Therefore, Jesus charged them by telling them, you have made the temple into a den of robbers. You have robbed your fellow brothers and sisters. Someone came up with this phrase, business before prayers, thievery before sacrifices. And transactions were taking place in the temple courts. Jesus went to the temple courts. He didn't go inside, just to the temple courts. And the temple courts is named, is known as the court of the Gentiles. This place was set apart especially for Gentiles. Gentiles who had called on uh, Israel's God as their own God. And these people were known as uh, God-fearers. And Cornelius, Cornelius, uh, the guy who, who, who went to Peter, Cornelius was one of the God-fearers. And when these Gentiles began to believe in the God of Israel, Herod the Great constructed a large courtyard around the temple so that they could gather and worship. Hence the name, Court of the Gentiles. And then Caiaphas, the high priest, instituted the practice of selling sacrificial animals and ritually pure items in the Court of the Gentiles, making it a marketplace. 
And because it became a marketplace, it hindered the Gentiles from worshipping God. The house of prayer, the house of prayer, specifically designated for Gentiles to worship, has become defiled. And they were not able to express their devotion to God. Can you imagine people doing business inside the auditorium? So, Mark eleven seventeen, as he thought, that, as he taught them, he said, "Is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers." And then, secondly, he did this uh, after cleansing the temple from commercialism. He interrupted the ministry. In today's term, uh, meaning uh, he stepped up onto the stage and stopped the worship leaders and the worship team from doing their stuff. Or he would come up to the pulpit and push me down. Stop this. Mark eleven sixteen tells us, would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. I'm quoting Ray's statement again. So God had instituted a certain set of rituals for that temple, which necessitated that the priest would carry many things through it. They had to bring the animals into the temple, bind them upon the altar, and slay them. They had to catch the blood of these animals and carry it in basins into the holy place to sprinkle on the altar of incense. They had to take the bodies of the sacrifices after they were burned and carry them back out again. So there was a continual procession of priests through that temple all day long, carrying out a system of rituals which God himself had given this nation. And so Jesus stopped them from doing that. They couldn't bring the animals in for slaughter. The priests couldn't take out the burnt animals. Nothing. Jesus stopped everything in its track. As the king of Israel, What this means is that Jesus has rejected his worship. And Jesus is saying, your worship has no value at all. This represented actually the cursing of the heart of the nation of Israel. Jesus cursed the fig tree. This action is cursing the nation of Israel. Why? Because it has leaves only, but no fruit. It appears to have life, but in reality, it does not. It professes to offer hope to men and women from all over the earth. And so people, people come to the temple hoping to find salvation, hoping to feel the emptiness in their hearts, hoping to have the burden of sin lifted from them. But they find no help in the temple. And because Jesus did what he did, It was the point of no return. The death of Jesus was sealed. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. Before that, they were only talking about what are we going to do about this man called Jesus? What are we going to do with him? Now, they are looking for a way to kill him. And the doom of Israel was sealed. Mark records for us in verse 20, in the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, 
the fig tree you cursed has withered. Life has gone from the nation of Israel. That's why Jesus, you know, um, in Luke, the people were welcoming him. They were jubilant. They were singing. They were shouting. There was so much joy, so much hope. But Jesus, when he looked at Jerusalem, he wept. He wept. Because the cornerstone had been rejected. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus is coming again, you know. Are you ready for him? And just as Jesus, when he went to the temple, he was looking for fruit. When he comes again, he's also looking for fruit, not leaves. Jesus is hungry for fruit. You know, there's a parable that Jesus told in Luke chapter 13. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Have I told you the story about the jackfruit tree in my garden? You have, huh? How many of you re don't, don't remember? Okay, so I'll tell you, okay? So... So when I move in, when, when we move into our current uh, uh, house, um, there was this jackfruit tree in the front garden, okay? And uh, the, the, the previous occupants uh, told me that uh, his daughter had planted the tree from seed, okay? But never bore fruit, you know, never bore fruit, you know. And it was just growing taller and taller, lots of leaves but no fruit, you know? So uh, the contractor who was doing some renovation at my house, I told him, cut it down now, you know. <laughs> Don't want it, you know. But one of the workers was like this man in verse 8. He said, no, 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 no. Let me just trim. Let me just uh, trim it so that it's not so tall, you know. Perhaps after I cut it, it will bear fruit. And it did, you know. <laughs> it did. One fruit, you know. Oh, I was so excited now. But then it turned bad. <laughs> First fruit also turned bad. But since then, it has borne fruit. You know, maybe one in every few months. Okay? But I can really understand this sense of wanting to see fruit. Right? You really want to see fruit. And when you see fruit, you're so excited. So excited. You know, I know this is a serious message. Huh? But the lesson that we should learn is this. The lesson for us is how to live so that we will not be cut down by God. Huh? So as not to be cursed by God but that we will be fruitful. We will be fruitful. So the question is this. Are you all leaves but no fruit? And the question to the church is, is FPBC all leaves only but fruitless? You know, just as Jesus had gone to the temple, looked at everything, we will similarly undergo the same scrutiny. 
Jesus might not say anything. He might not say anything. But one day, as Luke 13 tells us, the axe will fall. The axe will fall. So as we ponder this solemn reminder, I want us to, to really ensure two things, okay? Number one, make sure that we are fruit-bearing disciples of Jesus Christ. Make sure you are bearing fruit, okay? And the first type of fruit is this, is the fruit of repentance. Very important. I think Pastor Elvin has been teaching uh, the Growing Deep group about repentance. Leo 3.8, we are told to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. There must be a change. There must be evidence that we have repented of our old lives. We have left our old lives. That we have become a new creation in Christ. We are new, born again. We must show that. And then secondly, because God has given us the Holy Spirit, we must do more than just bear the fruit of repentance. We must bear the fruit of the Spirit we can see the character of Christ being manifested in us. Are you growing in love towards God and towards people? Are you? Am I? Am I a joyful person? Having joy, the joy of the Lord? Not merely happiness because circumstances are good, but do I have joy? Is joy, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 a distinct thing, uh, a, a distinct feature in our life? Peace, forbearance. I like to say that I'm a patient person, okay? Except when I drive, okay? But then when I drive, every time I drive, I'm reminded, you know, oh, by God, you, you really need to work on patience. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you have been fasting the last two weeks, you are practicing self-control. And Jesus tells us, you will bear fruit if you remain in me. Because if the Holy Spirit remains in us, He is working to bring about transformation. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Such branches, Jesus' words, are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. So the first thing, make sure you are a fruit-bearing disciple. And secondly, make sure that your faith is authentic. I remember when I was uh, uh, very much younger, I remember this book. I, I don't think I've read it, but the title, you know, uh, captured my attention. I don't know why it captured my attention, but I didn't read the book. But the title of the book is this, How to, Become a Christi how, how, how to Be a Christian Without Being Religious. Anybody heard of that book, seen that book? No, no one? Uh? Well, okay. How to Be a Christian Without Being Religious. And that set me thinking, uh, wow. really set me thinking. Are you a Christian? Or are you being religious? Mm -hmm. 
You know, Jesus challenges us to move beyond outward appearances. With Israel, it was all form, no substance. Outward religiosity, but no inward truth. They followed rituals and traditions, but their hearts were far away from God. And Paul, when he wrote to Timothy, he said, you know, have, don't have anything to do with people who have a form of godliness that denies its power. So this Palm Sunday, as we remember Jesus who came to Jerusalem into the temple on a donkey as king, as messiah, a different kind of king, a different kind of messiah than, than the, the, the people were expecting. We remember, let us remember that he will come into our hearts. This is the temple. This is the temple. And he looks at everything. He looks at everything, yeah. So let us ensure that we are really bearing fruit. You know? The kind of fruit that Jesus is looking for. Fruit that will last for all eternity. And that our faith is genuine, authentic. So let us commit ourselves to abiding in Christ. And living a life of fruitfulness and authentic faith. Okay, let's pray now. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. Let's sing again the hymn, All to Jesus I Surrender. Okay. Let's pray first now. Lord, in Psalm 19, we are reminded, O oh Lord, that by your word, your servant is warned. And today, Lord, as we looked into the Gospel of Mark, Lord, we are given this very somber reminder that Lord, you, you look beyond outward appearances. You train your gazing and piercing sight into our hearts when everything is laid bare. My Father, your, your intention, Lord Jesus, your intention is not to make us feel condemned and guilty, but to tell us to remind us of what's really important. It is not about coming to church. It's not about doing quiet time. It's not about giving our tithes. It's not about attending cell group. It's not about all the religious forms and activities that we do. It is about the heart and the motive it's about why we do what we do. And Lord, you desire truth in the inward being. So Lord, I just pray that uh, we will just renew our commitment to you today, Lord. That God, we will just hold on to you, cling on to you, cleave to you, abide in you, remain in you, so connected to you, so that Lord, your life will continually flow into us and bring about spiritual vitality and health 
and that fruitfulness will just come. Because it's not about us trying to bear fruit. It is about just allowing your life giving energy and strength and power to flow into us. And Lord, that is how that is how we bear fruit. Fruit that will glorify your name, fruit that will last. Lord, I pray that God, we will be careful, Lord, that we will not worship you with empty words, oh Lord. We will not go through routines and perform rituals and be found wanting in true worship. We want to be true worshippers, oh Lord. So help us, Lord, as we come before you once again in surrender. I invite you all to stand as we sing all to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him In His presence day Jesus, I surrender humbly at His feet. I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus. Fall on me, I 
surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender Listen to the words of Jesus that he said to his disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. And that your fruit would remain. So that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be full. Lord, I pray you bless your people and dismiss them with your presence, O oh Lord. And God, may we all take seriously this command of Jesus to go out and bear fruit and bring pleasure to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless all of you. See you all again next week.